Kamesh Ketia. Kamesh Ketia. We're somewhere on the M1 at a rest stop between the city of Leicester and Manchester. Yes. Heading for my next stop. Stop. On this whirlwind tour of Great Britain. A visit to 10 Sai Baba centers across Great Britain in 11 days. And our driver for one leg of the tour, Kamlesh Kedia, who has a most loving story to tell about two important spiritual influences in his life. Welcome to Sojourns. This interview was recorded on England's M1 in April of 2016. And I discover that you're not only a devotee of Sri Satya Sai Baba. Yes. You've got roots that go back to being a student of and a great admirer of Ramana Maharshi. That's correct. Arunachala. Arunachala. You visit yes. every year and you walk around the mountain. Yes. Uh, and uh, you've learned a lot about the history there from an American from my state of Ohio. Yes. The city of Dayton. Yes. Whose name is Paul Brunton. Mr. Paul Brunton, yes. And, and my wife, Jody Cleary, familiarized me with him and we bought all of his books. Okay. So we've read everything that we know about Arunachala from him because he discovered in his own life the spiritual path at a very profound level. Yes. And now you're doing the same thing. You've done the same thing. What was specifically your attraction to Arunachala before we get to Sai Baba? Well, I had a friend of mine who was selling books and I was keen reading books. And you were a what, librarian, weren't you? Well, I was a doctor then in India. And he gave me a title called In, in Search of Spiritual India by Paul Brunton. I read about 150 pages. They were boring. They first. were boring? Very boring. I found them very ex exciting. Oh, well, it was boring for me because there wasn't much. This is his, his spiritual exploration. Yes, spiritual he, it was all around India. And he found many people he debunked, he didn't think were genuine. Yeah. And then he came across Ramana Maharshi. Yes, and he was referred to Ramana Maharshi by the Shankaracharya of South India. Exactly. Neither of them had met each other, but he went to see Raman Maharshi and the story of all Roman Maharshi and himself experiencing the answers for which he had questions written down in his pads. He never asked a single question to Raman Maharshi because all the answers were coming through his, his what do you say? His subordinates, his yeah, emissaries. Yeah. And you his want, devotees. And I was so thrilled, all my hairs from the whole body. You've said that now three times today. Yes, yes. So and it is happening now as well, you know. The it hair just standing up on your body as you think about Ramana Maharshi? Yeah, yeah. And Arunachala? Yeah. And what is it that captures that feeling in you that causes that reaction? I think Raman Maharshi is a part of Arunachala because he was able to see and view underneath Arunachala which nobody else had ever seen. All the yogis, all the gurus were there. But when you say seen and viewed, you mean metaphorically speaking, or do you mean in another way? Spiritually, world? spiritually he was able to see. Okay. Yeah. And he said the whole world is underneath Arunachala. Wow. And I said, well, I'm a devotee of Shiva because I'm a Brahmin and according to Hindu culture, all Brahmins are devotees of Shiva. All right. And Arunachala is a Shiva. Mm -hmm. And if Arunachal mountain is where, first of all, Shiva manifested himself, that's the most pious place anybody would like to go and visit. Now, you said something to me that caught my attention, that it's the holiest place on earth. Yes. In that, your mind. That's my mind, yes. What does your wife have to say about that Jayshree? When it comes to comparing it to Prashanti Nilayam, the, the abode of the highest beast. Well, my wife is a 100% devotee of Sai Baba, <laughs> no doubt about it. And once she has visited this Arunachala with me uh -huh. for the last four or five years, he is doing the Parikrama as well with me. Initially, he wasn't doing it. She was just coming, having darshan, and then we went to Aruna, I mean Raman Maharshi, mm -hmm. but 
You won't believe what happened with me at Arunachala three times, not once. Okay, I'll bite. What happened to you? Right. First of all, I think after four or five years, we went to Arunachala. Tiruvannamalai is the name of the town. Yes. We went there, booked a hotel, and early morning, I went to pass my urine and stool. It was all right. But after an hour, I thought I need to go and pass urine again. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I was struggling to pass my urine. And that's when we understand I had uh, what is you call a blockage? Blockage, yeah. A, a large prostate? And large prostate, besides this. Men my age know about such things. Yeah. Well, 70% of men age 60 plus yeah. throughout the world are suffering right. from the same thing. So I just made up one of the few problems women never have to worry never, about. Never, never <laughs> ever. Yeah. But then I went to the doctor, I was admitted in the hospital and it went on and on till one o'clock in the afternoon. I told the consultant, say, I need to get this cleared now and you better do the, what do you say, uh, catheterization. Mm -hmm. He called the surgeon from the government hospital. He came here at three o'clock. I was suffering since seven o'clock, drinking water all the time, couldn't pass anything. And I would think drinking water all the time would add to the problem. It was adding that problem. At three o'clock it was cleared and I had made up my mind. Whatever happens, I'm going to go and have darshan of Arunachala in the temple. Mm -hmm. And luckily with his blessings, I went around six o'clock in the temple. There were quite a few uh, devotees. I was a Gujarati person, so the priest wouldn't know. We couldn't communicate in our language. But he was signing me to be at the back because I had my catheterization and everything. He couldn't see that. But somehow he told me to keep away. And then he called everybody to go away and asked me to come. What he did was, the garland which was on Shiva, he took it over and he put it on you. Put it on me, garland. And how did he know to do that? I don't know. I don't know. And I thought I was blessed like anything that day. And, you, and, and you I were, had, I'm sure. and I had two family members, and they saw it as well, and they were surprised. Then we went to Parvati Ji's mandir, and from there he was giving a prasad, which he would only give once in a day. He called everybody, asked them to go away, invited me, and gave that prasad to me. And why did he do that? Yeah. But uh, why, why would he do that? Just No here? idea, no idea. But I just think it was Lord Shiva's blessings on me. Then, I again went there with my other family members. Same thing happened. It was another priest whom I didn't know. He took the garland from Shiva and put it in my neck. And I, I was thrilled. So this is three times you've had this. Third time, my wife was with me and she was praying to Parvati Ji that same thing happens and I would take the garland from Parvati and pass it over to my wife. And the priest, first of all, did the thing he has been doing, took the garland from Shiva, put it in my neck. And then he took another garland from Parvati and asked me to garland in my wife's neck. Now this has happened three times in my 14 years and I can't believe any other reasons apart from the blessings of Lord Shiva. So that's why it has added significance for you. Definitely, definitely. I, I'm, I'm just, I haven't got the word to express myself. And did myself. you find yourself thereafter shortly through medicine being cured? Or oh what? yes, I was cured. I came back to UK and uh, I was operated and uh, touch wood, I haven't got any problem. That's great. Yeah. How many years ago is this? Oh, this was more than 10 years ago now. So you were a young man. I was a young man Younger and I'm still a young man. Oh, I know you are. You are 65, right? 68. 68. Yeah, yeah you're a young man. Uh, two years <laughs> younger than you. <laughs> Kamlish is driving us along the M1 motorway. We're maybe a little bit more than halfway to our destination of Manchester. Yep. 
I see they've got lots of wind power coming up here too, like we have in uh, the United States. Maybe it doesn't show up on the camera yet, but it will in a second or so. And I think what I wanted to ask you is, before we get to Sai Baba, to wrap up a little bit about your love of Varanachala, uh, was it because of the books by Paul Brunton that inspired you to look more closely into that? And Definitely. Tell me, and tell me about what you learned from him. Well, basically what it is, is books are pointing you towards the direction you have to go. It doesn't take you. Similarly, Paul Brunton and his book, they have influenced me in such a way that uh, I, I, I can't forget Arunachala or Raman Maharshi. And similarly, I would always remember Paul Brenton as the writer of the book. So we've picked up a little more traffic on the motorway here. Yep. Uh, I think you should still be able to make your trip in good time. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Let's resume with where we left off with the story right. about this amazing author Paul Brunton. Yeah. Did you read just his one book or did you read more than that? I have read more books on Arunachala and on Raman Maharshi where you've got references of Paul Brunton. But I read the whole book of Paul Brunton. The title is In Search of Secret India. Yes. And that was the one which really excited me to go and visit that place. And I was just wondering how many Hindus in particular would have read that book. But it really influenced me like anything. Did you come across many of your friends or other people who might have read it? Well, unfortunately, I, no. I was, I was always under the impression it was for a Western audience mostly. Well, the book, I think, was targeted towards Western audience. But it has been translated into so many languages in India now. But till now, I have visited that place about 14 times. But hardly have I seen any Gujarati person visiting that place. Really? So I'm really surprised that this place is in India. It's one of the most spiritual places. Because in text, in uh, Shiv Puran, it says, whoever is living in the three kilometer dimension of Arunachala would go and have moksha. So do you one day hope and wish and pray that that happens to you? Definitely, definitely. And once upon a time, I told my wife that I'm going to buy a place in there, a land, build a home within three months, three kilometers, and I would like to die there. So you you want to make sure that you do get moksha there. I hope so. Full realization. Yes. Oneness with the divine. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. Well, you know, I, I struggled to come up with something good to talk about yesterday uh, on the Mahasamadhi uh, yeah. anniversary of five years after Baba left his, yep. his body form. And it seemed to me that the subject of moksha, the subject of liberation, is something that has to be addressed maybe even more so among Sai Baba devotees because that was his number one lesson. Definitely. I mean, most of the spiritual leaders we have had, Baba was a god anywhere. And what they are preaching is self-realization, yes. end of the day. And all have got maybe different paths, but they are reaching the same top. There are a few things which I would like to mention in here that a river is one flowing from north to south yes and you have got so many steps to reach that river from north to south it could be one mile two mile three mile but the water is the same you get from wherever you uh, take a dip similarly a mountain is built by stones mm -hmm. all different stones but making it one mountain like yes. all religions are one what Baba is saying is the same thing. Exactly. And we have to reach that goal, whichever path we feel comfortable for us. That's a great metaphor because both the water and the, and the stones and the mountain, we sort of lose 
sight of the main object because of the many stones, the many distractions in our lifetime. Yeah. But you've discovered this. It doesn't matter what led you here in the first place. It's my view that when I meet people like you, once on that path, it's almost impossible to pull yourself away from that path. Definitely. It's, 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 it's second to none. You can't do it. Unless you are committed, you, you won't move from your path. You would stick to your path. And that is definitely. But there are people, like I said to you earlier, society is a selfish society. Wherever or whichever country you are in, everybody wants to get something out of that spiritual person or a guru or a god. But once he has passed away and there is nothing to get from him, people lose their sight and they just go on from one place to another searching for the same spiritual path and they won't find it. So what do you propose could be a solution to turn people around in their orientation so that they stay with their familiarity with Baba, Baba's mission, Baba's purpose, and Baba's program for each of us? Baba has said it. If you are a Christian, be a good Christian. If you are a Sikh, be a good Sikh. If you are a Muslim, be a good Muslim. I'm not telling you to convert. He is just guiding us, helping us, advising us to, to be focused on one thing. Sure, and furthermore, I don't think he's asking you, to, I don't think he's suggesting that there's anything to convert to. No, no, nothing. His ideology is universal. Mm -hmm. It is not basically a Hindu philosophy, it's a universal philosophy. And once you are into it, you should try to stick to it. Because he is your father and he is your mother. And maybe one of the last questions I can ask of you is to describe for me what it is that you would share with your neighbor or strangers about Sai Baba that they don't know about that might be most beneficial for them to learn about. Well, now and again, when I see a colleague of mine or a neighbor, and when, I, when we are conversing and on it, any topic, I try to bring in the ideology of Baba, Sai Baba, and try to explain them what his message was. And when they hear it, they are thrilled because it is something new for them yes. to hear. But that is it because he could be a Muslim, she could be a Christian or whatever. But then they start appreciating. But that is all they would go up to. But what I've started doing now is being on Facebook. I, you're, you're on Facebook. I am on Facebook At now. At 62, 63 years of age, you're on Facebook. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, but I enjoy it. I get very good clipses from uh, Aruna Challa, Advait, uh, Satya Sai Baba, all these organizations I'm affiliated with. I get messages, get pictures, get blessings, and I circulate them. Initially, there were two or three people liking it. Now, more than 10, 15, 20 people like them every day. And when I have a conversation with them, they really appreciate saying that we are finding something new, very interesting. Isn't that great? And I really enjoy. See, the social media has been blamed for many of the ills in the world today, but it's also credited for many of the good things. That oh, are definitely, definitely. I try to keep away from all those yes. things which are not concerned with us. Oh, uh -oh. right. I think we go right here. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. But Baba has said so many things which applies to each and everybody, and it is universal. Like in the bhajan it says, my eyes would only look at those good things. Mm -hmm. My ears would only listen to those good things. My hands would always go forward for good things. And my legs would take me to good places. Now this is universal. And I think we need to learn step by step because you can't change a human being in a day. You can't change him in a month. It takes years yes, to change. It does. And 
the more we try to uh, practice in our life the more we enjoy well and this, that is the way i look forward to yeah. it this has been a delightful conversation uh with your son i had a chance to interview him when he was in the back seat earlier uh coming up in a couple of days uh subo is a, a lawyer who's a sai baba devotee who's going to be uh, sitting for a soldier's interview on the train as we go to bristol Okay. And now here are you behind the wheel being so generous of your time. My pleasure. And so courageous <laughs> as oh, I distract you with it's this. It's an honor. It's an honor <laughs> to express my views on Satya Sai Baba, Aruna Chaleshwar, Raman Maharshi and the writer Paul Brenton. That's great. Because I was born and brought up in Tanzania. I had no clue of Hinduism. I had never read any books on Hinduism and when I went had an opportunity to go for higher education in india that is where i started learning about hinduism and the spirituality only in basically. higher education yes so how were you raised when you say raised what do you mean by were you raised? raised in a in hinduism at all and any religion? oh yes definitely my uncle was very religious and he was the head of a hindu community in tanga and his name was Dash Shankar Ketya, mm -hmm. very spiritual person as well. He used to go to India quite often. He was wealthy and he used to hire a bogey of a train in 1950s. And he would invite all their family members to go on a pilgrimage with him. Huh. And he would spend two to three months. And he really used to enjoy. And he was the person who compelled us to go through the temple and learn Gita. Now in those days, learning Gita was cramming Gita. I didn't know anything about the meaning of Gita. So when I grew up, by that time, I I was able to cram and recite all 18 chapters. Oh my goodness, really? But after a few years, I lost everything because sure. I was not going there. And I had nothing to uh, recall that this is what Gita said. Right. Because uh, everything was in Sanskrit. When I went to India, then I realized that no, only reciting Gita is not enough. You need to learn, to find out, to understand and practice Gita. As Baba says in one of that his chief what? discourses, yes. in my estimation, it's not information, it's transformation. It is transformation, yes. basically. Yeah. Kamish, thank you very much. Sairam, good luck. Sairam. God bless you. And thank until you. the next time, we're on one of the motorways in the UK. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you.